Man, that's a good sound. I could listen to that all day. The note is a low B, but really I'm talking about the sound and the feel, if you're playing it, of the lowest open string. The sound has a gravitational pull in metal, and really in most guitar music. Man, that's an evil sound, especially when you move it around. It's a descending minor second, which has to be one of the most common melodic intervals in music. But when you play it with death metal distortion, and when you play a bunch in a row, it takes on its own dark, evil-sounding character. I want to argue in this video that it makes a lot of sense to think of death metal harmony based on these two guiding forces, the gravitational pull of the open lowest string and the sounds of certain intervals. I'm going to do that by analyzing a short but filthy riff from one of the moldiest bands around, to mold. If you ever study music in school or with lessons, you'll probably spend time on harmony. In fact, you'll probably spend most of your time on harmony. And really, you'll probably spend most of your time on what is called common practice harmony, which is named for the style of tonal music that acts as a kind of shared language for European composers from roughly the 17th century to the start of the 20th. fits this music is based on a few key ideas. In a nutshell, you have scales from which you build certain types of chords, which have different functions, and melodies and chords behave in certain conventional ways that create a sense of stability and instability. This covers a lot of cool music, but theories about common practice harmony don't always do a good job of talking about other music. For one, a near-exclusive focus on harmony doesn't leave much room for talking about rhythm and timbre, which are super important in all music, especially non-classical music. But even if you want to talk about harmony, theories about common practice harmony don't often fit that well. This is true for metal, especially. A really common thing to do is try to fit metal riffs into scales. People say all the time that metal riffs are in Locrian or Phrygian. While this is sometimes true in the sense that a riff might have all of the notes from an E Phrygian scale or whatever, I think it kind of misses the point. The point, in my opinion, for a lot of metal, is this. And this. Basically, I think that instead of thinking in terms of pitches and scales, it makes sense for a lot of metal, especially death metal, to think of cycles that tend to start and or end with the lowest open string, and bands saturating a riff or portion of a riff with certain intervals. Let's finally enter the manner of infinite forms. standard tonal harmonic analysis would probably call this an embellished B minor scale. It's clear that B is the tonal center of this riff. It's the pitch we keep returning to. However, calling this an embellished B minor scale misses several important things. First, it's not like we just pick any one of the 12 possible tonal centers. Instead, the tonal center is strongly determined by the tuning of the guitar. Second, it is specifically the low B that is the tonal center. Higher ones, when they show up later in the riff, aren't given the same weight. Third, the importance of the low B is established by repetition and a general downward melodic tendency, not from dominant to tonic chordal motion. And fourth, just as important as the gravitational pull into the black hole of the low B string is the fact that we keep getting spat back out to start the descent again. Most death metal harmony is cyclical, not teleological. And really, I don't think calling it a B minor scale with embellishments is satisfactory because it undervalues the chromatic steps when really I think the sound of them is the whole point of the riff. Atonal theory, which focuses on recurring interval patterns without worrying about scales, might be more useful for describing how I hear this riff. Basically, I hear two main sections, each with its own characteristic cluster of intervals. 
First, there's a saturated evil part where we get lots of evil intervals. If the first bit of the riff is evil sounding because it has a lot of minor seconds and minor thirds, the second part has a lot more major seconds, perfect fourths, and perfect fifths, which give it a kind of pentatonic sound. This subtle shift of mood helps generate momentum back to the low B. Anyways, I think harmony is important in a lot of metal, but it doesn't normally fit nicely into how people normally talk about harmony. And these are just some preliminary ideas about how we might be able to talk about what's important in metal harmony in terms that make sense to metal musicians. And of course, harmony isn't the only important thing in metal. In this riff, the guitar does the same thing over and over, but the feel changes completely because of what the drums are doing. Here it is, finally, with the recording. Thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, I hope you know about Mike, Wombat, and Cubscribe. See ya.